next presentation comes from Tanwi Tech. Uh, we Tech is a Singaporean-based entrepreneur who founded Conint Proprietary Limited in 1999. He's been in the construction and real estate industries for over 25 years with expertise in project management, design and build for uh, building project and property development. He's also the co-founder and executive director of Kai Hospitality, a 33-room conservation boutique hotel located at the heart of the city centre. Uh, WeTech has been appointed as an adjudicator under, the, under Singapore's Security of Payment Act since 2010 as, and has adjudicated more than 30 payment dispute cases under the SOP Act. Please welcome him, uh, speaking on licensing and learning, the Singapore experience. Tan Wee-Tech. Hi, good morning. Uh, we are running behind 10 minutes, I think. Right? Yeah. So I, I think your sandwich will wait for you. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks again, uh, the World Plumbing Council, for bringing me uh, to the most livable city in the world. I think it's Melbourne, right? Second, second. Oh, second. Okay. Just a okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, can I have a show of hand? Uh, how many of you have been to Singapore? Wow, okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll do the selling a bit shorter because I want to put some context into my presentation. Okay. So we have about 5.6 million people and uh, on the land of 721 square kilometers. Okay. Uh, that doesn't ring a bell. Uh, this is what Melbourne is. Okay. Melbourne has got a population of 5 million, uh, but uh, the land size is about 12 times the size of Singapore. Okay, um, we have an aging population. Uh, average age is about, the medium age is about 41.7. And on average, we make about 4,000 Aussie dollar. And uh, we are a multi-racial society. Um, Predominantly, uh, we are Chinese, 74%. Uh, we have a Malay, uh, which is about uh, 14%, and we have Indian, 9%. And the, uh, the, uh, the other 3% is actually other ethnic groups, like you know, the Europeans, you know, the Middle Eastern people. Okay, now let's have some fun. Um, we are the safest city one of the safest cities uh, in the world. I think Melbourne is uh, number 10. Sydney, uh, surprisingly, is number 5. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, okay, we have the best uh, airport in the world. If you've been there, you know the Jewel just opened last year. Um, they have a lot of plumbing issues also. I think there are some water leakages, things like that, but it happens. Uh, we have the most powerful uh, one of the most powerful passports together with Japan. Uh, it means that we can go to 189 countries without a visa. And uh, of course, uh, our Prime Minister is the highest paid public servant in the world. Uh, he, gets, he gets paid about uh, 2 million Aussie dollars. Yeah, don't look at me, I, 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 I pay part of uh, his salary, I think. <laughs> yeah, and... Uh, we have a uh, highest uh, human capital index. Okay, um, we are the most. Uh, this year we are, we are the most competitive economy in the world. Uh, Hong Kong is second, but I think very soon Hong Kong will be knocked out of second place because of the current situation. Okay, we are in the bottom ten of the inequality. Uh, 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 what I call that in, uh, in the world. Uh, basically, um, I put, put that into perspective. Uh, we have one of the lowest uh, uh, personal income tax rate uh, in the world. Uh, if you are the richest, one of the richest men in, in Singapore, you pay only 22% of your income tax. Okay? Uh, because of that, the wealth is not actually uh, shared uh, in the eye of the uh, Oxfam report. That's why we are, but you are, you are rich, uh, please come to Singapore. <laughs> okay, 
Um, this is my topic. I, I, I put you uh, through some context of Singapore. So, uh, licensing and learning, the Singapore experience. Um, I'm not too sure whether you, are, um, um, you have license in, 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 in Australia, right? but in Singapore, it's very real. Um, and uh, I'm going to touch on that. Okay, this, this is actually my uh, agenda for today. Okay, I'll give you an overview uh, of the licensing framework, basically, and uh, why we have a single licensing for the plumber, and uh, what's the journey like, past and present, and uh, qualifications uh, uh, needed to be a plumber, a licensed plumber, and uh, what are the learning pathways to become a, a plumber, and the value proposition for sustainable and consistent high-quality plumbing work. I think Rob has actually uh, give me some very kind words, so I will not uh, go through this. But I have to sell you uh, sell uh, sell a little bit about Singapore Plumbing Society. Just two lines. We are a non-profit society founded in 1956, uh, which is 61 year this year. Yeah, so we are still a long way as compared to United Association, who has got 130 years. Um, like. Uh, the master plumbers in Australia, I think our job here is to uphold the plumbing and sanitary standards for public health and also to advance the interests of the plumbers in Singapore. Okay, how many of the same kind? Same kind means plumbers, okay? Uh, we, we have um, 881 uh, licensed plumber, uh, which consists of 78% uh, Above 50, above 50. Who is above 50 here? Oh, no, okay. Just a few. So we, ha we have a problem. You, you look at the, uh, the, the only 6% of the plumbers, uh, licensed plumbers, are below the age of 40. So in 20 years' time, Singapore will be a shortage, not water, but plumbers, right? So this is a very real. Um, how to overcome that? Uh, I wouldn't know. Okay, out of these 881 plumbers, uh, 200, about 200, uh, they are the members of the Singapore Plumbing Society. Okay, um, Singapore Plumbing Society licensed plumber are a bit younger. Uh, this is what we're trying to do to attract uh, young, uh, younger people to join. Um, coincidentally, some, someone talks about um, a doctor. Uh, we have more doctors in Singapore than plumbers. Um, about 13,000 uh, uh, doctors, uh, that give us uh, one doctor is servicing about 450 people. You do your math, and uh, we have one plumber serving 6,500 people. Okay, to give you some, yeah. Okay, this is a breakdown of the, uh, our membership. Um, mentioned before, 201 are licensed plumbers. We have a, a, a category called associate members uh, who are uh, in the process of uh, becoming a uh, licensed plumber. So, and you can look at that. Uh, uh, we are trying to get the younger people to join us so that we, 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 we want to share with them. Uh, plumbing is actually the, uh, a choice career. Uh, it's not a no choice, then you become a plumber, but it's a choice career. Okay, in, um, in Singapore Plumbing Society, 80% uh, of the plumbers, uh, licensed plumbers, uh, has um, at least a trade certificate uh, in order to become a licensed plumber. So, you know, you, you look at that, um, a diploma degree uh, constitute a, a small fraction of that, that numbers. Okay, great. Let's go into the body of the presentation, uh, which is the uh, licensing framework. Okay. Um, I mentioned um, the first one is actually the uh, main uh, legislations. Um, uh, just in case you, you, you are not aware, Singapore is actually highly regulated uh, uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, uh, compliance. Right? So we have the uh, Public Utilities Act. Uh, we have a Public Utilities Water Supply regu Regulations. Um, last year, we just revised our Code of Practice for Water Services. Uh, now it becomes a 
Singapore standard. SS uh, stands for Singapore standards. Uh, we have the code of practice of uh, sewerage and sanitary work. Okay, um, we are not. We do not have a, a unified uh, standards for water and sanitation. Um, they are they are actually separate. And uh, this is actually very similar to the uh, WPC, uh, what we call the protection pillar, right? I think it's quite similar. Yep. Okay, the second limbs of the, uh, the framework is actually the collaboration framework. So most of these standards and code of practice are formulated in consultation um, with uh, the uh, professional bodies in Singapore, like the Singapore Plumbing Society, uh, Institution for Engineers, you know, things like that. Um, of course, the uh, statutory board. Um, our biggest housing developer in Singapore is actually the government. Uh, uh, it's called the Housing Development Board. Um, just to give you some context, about 80% of us actually live in the public housing. 80%. And 95% uh, owns the house. It's not rent, it owns. Um, that's why we don't have the... Uh, I don't think we have an issue for the next five years like Hong Kong, right? So uh, Jurong Town Corporation is actually in charge of the development of the industrial property, okay, uh, from the government side. So the corporation, this is uh, very much similar to the participation limbs, the pillar of the WPC. Okay, the third limbs I'm going to talk about is actually the, uh, someone talks about the, the world skills, uh, and also the uh, continual learning. Um, so um, in Singapore, we are the almost we are also in in, in a in a wagon. So um, once you are be, once you become a licensed plumber, it's actually for life, okay? Unless you do something stupid, okay? <laughs> okay. okay, but um, so. We have to attend the four hour. It's, it's pretty demanding for you to renew the license. You, you just need to attend four hours of the refresher course. No exam, nothing. Every three years. Demanding, right? Yeah. Okay. So then um, for us, the SPS, we, con we, we conduct specialized technical training. Like the, if you're a plumber, you'll probably know about high and low pressure tests. Um, washing water tanks is a serious problem in Singapore. There are many plumbers who, whose license got revoked because of washing a water tank. Okay, it's, it sounds silly, but then uh, this is what happened. And the leak detection and a pumping system. And we have a lifelong uh, learning framework, uh, which is called Skill Future. If you are interested, you can go to the website. Um, it's a very comprehensive set of uh, a route map. Um, they set up the skill set, they set up the objectives of learning, things like that. Um, um, you can, um, it's a national initiative to actually to get all Singaporeans to reach a full potential. And uh, it's heavily, heavily subsidized by the government. Um, and this is probably similar to the practice uh, pillar that we, we, we have in uh, WPC. Okay. Now, having said all the nice words, uh, things won't get moving, really, without this. Right? So you need a cane to cane somebody before this guy listens to you. Right? Maybe, I, I don't know, maybe this is the Asian culture. So, um, so far we have not had plumbers uh, go to jail yet. But we have plumbers being fined heavily. We have plumbers being uh, revoked. Uh, the, the word revoked means once it's revoked, is revoked for life. Unless you go and see your MP, you give a, a very good, good substantiation. Why, why is it that you shouldn't be revoked? Otherwise, you are gone, right? Uh, you, you can't be a licensed plumber anymore. Yeah, so um, this is very real. Uh, so it's, it always keep us on the toe. And uh, this is something to protect, uh, of course, the public health system. Okay, um, there's a background to this single li uh, licensing for plumbing work. Why single, right? Um, okay, the story goes like this. Uh, before I became a licensed plumber, in 2002, 2002 uh, before that, before 2002, we have uh, uh, 
the water license, which uh, enti um, enable the uh, plumber to do only the plumbing work for water services. We have another license actually allows a plumber to do sanitation work. So these are two separate licenses, right? If you have one license, if let's say you have water license, you can't do sanitation work. That was 2002. Uh, that was something like 16 years ago, 17 years ago. On 1st of August 2002, someone complains, some, bod uh, some professional body complains to, to the government, uh, you are regulating too much. So the government took away the licensing for the sanitation. Okay? So for, for about 16 years, we, we only have the uh, plumbing uh, services license. So anybody, anybody can go to the site and do their pipe laying for sanitation. Isn't it great? 16 years we have been doing that. Right? So one day, one day, someone wakes up and says, oh, no, something happened, right? Um, it was due to a few big incidents, newly completed project. When it flushed, you know, the waste didn't go through the pipe, but it go downstairs. <laughs> go to the, 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 the household below, right? So there are a lot of issues, you know, things like that. So, of course, now you look at that, um, I underline some of the words, right? Of course... Uh, this is why we are expanding the licensing framework to include sanit uh, sanitary plumbers, right? So that's the story behind. Okay, this I talk about. So the single licensing uh, framework only started first October two zero one eight. In fact, it's very 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 recent. So about a, a year ago. So that means now you have single license, you are able to do uh, what I call water service plumbing work and the sanitation uh, plumbing works. Okay, uh, so it's regulated and you have the license. And of course, um, the reason why, you, why, why the, the government wants to license you uh, is to put you on tow and something goes wrong, they prosecute you. Great, right? This is what happened. So since, uh, since 1st of October uh, 2018, we have a single license, right? So what, what kind of qualification you need? Uh, so basically, um, the trade certificate is needed. Uh, uh, basically, the builder certificate in uh, plumbing and pipe fittings. Um, if you have a diploma or degree, you can also become a plumber. I will show you the uh, flow chart later on. Um, and after that, you need to have a, a post qualification of two years uh, working under a licensed plumber before you can take the uh, exam with, the, uh, with PUB. PUB is actually our national water agencies, right? So it's not, it's not very difficult to become a licensed plumber, but I just don't understand why we, need, we only have... 881 plumbers. Okay, I, I, I put that into a flow chart. So now, um, uh, you have to complete, of course, your secondary school education, uh, minimum 10 years of uh, six, four, yeah, minimum 10 years of education. So then you, you can actually go to this uh, BCA, the uh, Building Con Construction Authority Academy, to do your builder certificates. Then after that, you have two years of uh, uh, experience. Then you, you go to PUB, you, 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 you sit in front of five examiners, and they grill you, and they test you, and you are happy with it. Hello, I'm licensed, right? <laughs> Simple. <laughs> right? Sounds easy. So this is a technical route, uh, by, by the way. So uh, I think uh, the, the, the speaker showed just now there was a vocational route and also a uh, the Swiss guy, right? Uh, and uh, an uh, academic route. Uh, it's, it's, it's about the same. So this is a technical route. So now, you, you either go to BCA Academy or now you go to the Institute of Technical Education. This is a, a uh, government-funded school. Uh, about 30% of the cohort. Okay? In Singapore, we average about 40,000 40, babies a year. 40,000. So out of that 40,000 uh, babies a year, 30% will go to this technical college. 
okay, to learn the skill set, typically about two years. Okay? Um, so then you, you can actually then go through the uh, two, uh, same, same route. You, you get two years experience, you go for PUB examination. Yeah. Now, if you have done well in your ITE education, let's say uh, maintaining a GPA of 3.5%, um, uh, 3.5 uh, points out of four, you can then go to the government polytechnics, uh, which award you a diploma, right? So with a diploma, you did not go through the entire uh, builder certificate course, but you just need to complete the practical portion. Then you again, um, gain two years of relevant experience, then go for PUB exam, and you'll be licensed. So the last uh, is actually academic route. So basically, same thing, you, you pre pre prepare youth to go to university. And uh, you have a degree. Um, a degree entitles you to become the professional engineer uh, after passing some exam. Uh, degree entitles you to also to become a licensed farmer if you choose to. Okay, then you go through, then again, happy ending, right? <laughs> Okay, so this is basically a, a, a route that, that, that you know, you, if you want, you become licensed. Okay, I'm going to touch on very quickly the value proposition of sustainable and high quality uh, plumbing service. Okay, uh, basically, uh, lifelong learning, continual professional training is actually the key. Uh, I think uh, we heard many speakers talk about that. Um, and instead of three years refresher course, four hours, uh, now we are actually talking to uh, PUB, our National Water Agency, uh, led uh, Singapore Plumbing Society to actually to, uh, to, uh, to, to manage this journey. We want to break it down to every year. You have to accumulate certain training hours before we renew your license. And we also think that um, don't always use a cane to cane your kids, right? Give them rewards, positive reinforcement. So I say that that will shape your human behavior. Because otherwise, no one wants to become plumber because the penalty is very high, right? Okay, um, of course, regular like, dialogues and sh uh, sharing session like this, uh, that will help us um, to raise the quality. Okay, I'm going to play a, a one and a half minutes video and uh, to, t to, 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 to give you in some, some rough idea what are we doing in Singapore in terms of uh, providing clean water, um, uh, uh, how to actually we treat the uh, um, uh, water and also uh, flood, uh, flood uh, uh, prevention? I have another video, but I think you're hungry, right? I'm not going to show you. So you can, you can actually watch it when you actually upload it. Uh, okay. So uh, thank you. Thank you for, for your attention and um, enjoy having this uh, presentation. Thank you.